and hello good evening welcome it is uh, it's thursday the 13th of march the day before we are led to believe the council of the european union will be rubber stamping the tobacco products directive in the format in which we all know it currently resides i'm kind of there's a little voice inside me that hopes that tomorrow my fondest dreams can become reality and they go nah we're not our studio by two very good friends who uh, are here to discuss what I think is a little bit of a frippery and some some solid and, and serious stuff as well. Those two, I'll do ladies first because I think that's probably the way to go. In in the middle monitor tonight on number four, he reminded himself, we have Sarah GX. Hello Sarah, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Have you been doing anything exciting during the course of today? Today? Um... <laughs> Yeah, I had a meeting over in Harlow. Harlow, Harlow in Essex. <laughs> yeah, really interesting stuff. Was was vaping allowed? <laughs> uh, no, unfortunately not. Vape free zone, but you know. So the question is, because it wasn't allowed, did you stealth? Of course. <laughs> Good girl. Just wondered. <laughs> of course, in I don't think there's anywhere where I haven't stealthed. <laughs> I'm not hinting at the at the, 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 the uh, content tonight. In yeah. in what was the cat house, we have John Diver. John, how are you doing? I'm not too bad, Dave. Thanks. Goodly good. Have you done anything exciting to do? I've done a few things. Yeah, I'm quite busy for a change for a man who's pretty much unemployed most of the time. Um, I can't actually tell you what it was I was doing though. <laughs> oh, state secret. Absolutely. Was was vaping banned? Uh, vaping was not banned, no. So you didn't stealth? No, I had no need to stealth. Ah, right, I see, I see, I see. You see, I've got used to this this picture-in-picture -picture thing now, and in the proper size monitor, so that her head and my head are the same sizes, just on slightly different levels. We have the effervescent loveliness, the bountiful beautyliciousness that is the one and only Sav. How are you diddling, Sav, down there I'm, in the big monitor? I'm loving being in the big monitor. It's great. I can see so much more detail because you're so much closer. You were miles away before. I know. It's, it's, oh, I'm right. Yeah. It's get, it's, it's get custy lush. Light mouth, hinny, pet, burn, the nars. Anyway, yes. Let's let's plough on. Ten, you might have heard this reference to stealth. You'll see why in a little while. We're going to talk a little bit about the Global Nicotine Forum that's happening in Warsaw. We're going to be talking about the BAT XL Pro. This is a Generation 2 device that they've got coming out. And I want to know what people's feelings are about stuff like that being available in Lloyd's Pharmacy and all over everywhere. We're going to be talking a little bit about EFVI. And there is another topic which I wrote down while we were setting the show up and getting the calls and everything together because there's a rumour flitting about and we think this could be an opportunity for a certain charity and that's all coming up in VD Talk. <laughs> And, and oh, the train now standing on platform 13, 14, 15 and 16 has come in sideways. I do apologise for that. A little bit of echo. Well, what's a little bit of echo between friends? Stunned silence from the assembled <laughs> throat. I was waiting for the echo to come. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the punchline. Yeah, no. No, there's no punchline. I, 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 that's what I do. I'd start the joke and never finish it. It's always the best way. Um, right. If you're on Twitter, you'll know this has been discussed all over the place. And there are some pros, there are some cons, there are some in between, and there's all kinds. But Jack Vapor put a press release. Press release? <laughs> press Slick. <laughs> Slick's not the word, John. I've lost the bloody press release now. Here we are. Let's, let's, let's go to camera five, as you do. And here, here it is, from Edinburgh. 
British e-cigarette brand launches vaporless e-liquid to address vaping bans. Now, before I read any further, most people read the headline, read the last paragraph and move on. I'm going to go through the lot because it's important that we do. But the headline's a little bit worrying, but never mind, let's, let's blast on and we'll get comments out of everybody. Right, so, clearing the air for the e-cigarette industry. That's the strap line, by the way. Jack Vapor, the UK's leading high-quality e-cigarette brand, has today unveiled an innovative new product that could revolutionise vaping in public spaces. Clear Steam is the first British-made branded e-liquid that emits no vapour when exhaled and is the only product of its kind on the market that has been developed by a mainstream brand. Unlike existing e-liquids, which e-cigarette devices convert, convert into a fine harmless mist that the user exhales, the vapour produced by clear steam, clear steam, this is very difficult to say, clear steam dissipates prior to being exhaled. Developed in British laboratories following extensive research, Jack Vapor's investment in clear steam aims to make e-cigarettes even more distinguishable than their traditional counterparts. A visual concern that has resulted in a spate of public bans. I'm going to say blah, 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 blah. Um, because that's basically the meat of the piece until we get to this last paragraph. Clear Steam has been independently tested and meets all UK and EU industry standards. Available in a variety of strengths and flavours, including real tobacco, light, pure menthol, vanilla, and strawberry chew, or pure menthol, sorry, vanilla, and strawberry chew. The 10 milliliter bottles will retail for £5.19, pence, the same price as Jack Vapor's premium UK made e liquids. In addition to being compatible with all the brand's own e cigarette models, Clear Steam can also be used in any refillable device available on the market. So, there, that's kind of the meat of the press release effectively this stuff the idea at any rate is i feel to appease the naysayers that don't like the visible vapor i'm gonna throw it across to john because john joined me on twitter right at the beginning of this little bit of a conversation which has been running all day and had a few words to say what's your feeling about it john well <coughs> I mean, I came out against it. You, know, you you heard that fairly on early on this morning, but mm. uh, it seems to me that yeah, there will be people who who want to try that and and see that as easier than stealthing. Um, there's a but there's just too many drawbacks for me. Um, for the one thing, it's PG only, mm -hmm. which which wouldn't suit me at all. Would rip the hell out of my throat. Um, and, and really, I just, I kind of don't see the point of it, you know. Um, I, I usually use, as near as damn it, 100% um, VG if I can. Mm -hmm. And I, I can stealth vape anywhere and take slightly shorter drags and double it, inhale afterwards, and virtually nothing comes out. So I, I kind of, just, what's the point, you know? Yeah. Sarah, what's your take? Well, same, same as John. I mean, this isn't for me, basically, because... I can still vape my normal juice anyway. Um, you know, I'd be surprised if there was many people in chat who couldn't. Um, I do think it it probably has its place. I think, you know, we all move among people who have been socially conditioned for years um, so that anything that looks like smoke is automatically awful. Mm. Um, if it makes it easier for people to still vape, um, and particularly perhaps new users, then maybe it has its place, but I don't think I'll be buying any. <laughs> well, they, they have offered to send some for review. We'll see about that. But Sav, in a personal capacity, this is not reliant upon chat. I think you have thoughts on this as well, don't you? Yes, I'll be polite, but I think <laughs> it is absolutely pointless. Uh, as everyone said, I mean, stealth vaping is not exactly hard to do. And no, it, no, it's just no. <laughs> I wish you'd get down off the fence. Do you think I should? I think you should. The thing is, I'll tell you what worries me more than anything else. Let's take a situation here where it's not just Jack Vapor, but it's Totally Wicked, it's UK E-Liquid, it's Safe for Sigs, it's all of them, right? Vapor World, everybody. Everybody climbs onto this bandwagon and suddenly starts pumping out shed loads 
of this vaporless e-liquid and people like Hastings Professor Hastings who hates the very sight of vapour latch onto it the MHRA latches onto it and certain others like Ash latch onto it and they go well okay can, if we can do away with the vapour altogether that's fine and it strikes me that that's it just could possibly be the thin end of a wedge that gets shot of a part of vaping that I particularly enjoy. And I, I want to throw it across to John and, and see what his feelings are on that. John? I mean, yeah, it, it really is all about the exhale for me. Um, you know, we, we go through devices, we go up first, second, third generation. Really, all that is is chasing that better exhale. Um, and without it, it, it is not as enjoyable. It, um, to be honest, if they were like that as default, I'd still be smoking. Well, the bo bottom line on them is, really, if you've got something that gives you a little bit of a throat hit, a little bit of a tickle in the lung, mayhap, and looks nothing like a cigarette, and does not allow you to exhale any vapour, you might as well be using one of those plastic tampon things. I think. Yeah. yeah. Sarah, what's your take? I think I think these people need to learn that it's not all about the nicotine hit and it's not all about any one thing. There's there's a whole raft of things that make vaping attractive to smokers and taking away any one of those things reduces the attraction and the likelihood for people to switch. Um, so it's all very well saying, well, for the sake of all those people who just don't like it, you know, because of the way it looks, if you're then going to turn people away from vaping, um, then that's obviously a bad thing. Now, whether or not the likes of Hastings and that latch onto um, vaporless e-liquids is another thing. I, I have to say, it is a worry. Yeah, very much so. Sav, has Chad got much to say about this? Just a bit. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll start from the very beginning. Moonlit says, "What vaporless e-liquid?" Question mark. Whip it up says, "Not interested already." TJ says, defeats vaping, doesn't it? Yoda says, don't care, I can still vape anyway, not spending more money on that. Disco Dez says, I got some of that, it's called fresh air. <laughs> Robert Cleaver said, I think it's a bad idea as it suggests we should hide our safer alternative to smoking, plus it's no good for folk who can't take too much PG. Mm -hmm. Pete Collins says, the vape has half the fun. Old Kit again says, no breeding good for those who can't vape PG. Mm -hmm. Blaze has said, it's interesting, I might make up some 100% PG and see what it does. Moonlit says, I can stealth vape, but I don't enjoy it half as much, it feels like it's not working. Yoda has said, I'm not going to hide the fact that I'm vaping, no way. Slim UKV said, it's not the same, is it not the same as the Nicorette inhaler then? Doodlebug has asked, um, are they trying to appease the ants or are they sticking two fingers up at them? And Leanna Lawless has said, no, Nicorette is stone cold and unsatisfying. Do away with the vapour and get rid of the enjoyment. So there's nobody pro? Not really, no. There you are, John. You asked, who did we have to say pro? I can't find anybody. <laughs> there was a couple, wasn't there, this morning on, on uh, Twitter? Well, yeah. 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 Apparently not now. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting what Doodlebug brought up. Have you still got that on screen, Sav? I have, yes. Doodlebug was saying, but are they trying to appease the ants or are they sticking two fingers up at them? And she did say a genuine question. It's not that she knows the answer. It was a genuine question. No, it is a genuine question and it's one that I, 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 I don't know the answer to. But how do you view it, Sarah? Well, well, this was something I said on Twitter this morning. I mean, you know, how are they going to... The, the thing is with the smoking bans, um, one of the reasons that the ants say that work is worked was because they felt that non-smokers were reporting or complaining about any smokers who were smoking where they shouldn't be. So how are they going to then feel about um, e-cigarette users who basically can't be detected? And are these invisible vapours still containing all these dreadful toxins that they keep going on about? You know, if they can't see us do it, how are they going to enforce it? There is that. John, your take? Uh, my take is the MHRA will be all over this. Um, I can see, you know, I can see that, that them only giving licenses to firms that make pure PG juice. And essentially, that's all it is really, isn't it? 
As far as well, I, can... I may be wrong, but you know, isn't this just a hundred percent PG juice? From what I can see, um, yeah. I, I mean, I will take Jack Vapor up on their offer and get some down and have a look at it and find out what it is made of. Um, I mean, I've just sorry to interrupt. I've just go. got a message from someone that's actually got some. Okay. And they said got some clear steam this morning. It's proper odd, but works a treat. I can't vape at work because the smokers don't like the idea idea of me having pleasure legally in work. So it's ideal for me. That's interesting. That is that is extremely interesting. And I, and I'm not I'm not knocking the concept. I'm a little I'm. I'm a little bit worried about where it might lead is the problem. Um, if it's, I think if it's an idea to stick two fingers up and say, look, if there's no steam, nobody's bothered. That's, it's a little bit worrying. And I said no steam, no vapor, whatever. If there's no visible sign, and no, then nobody's bothered. As John says, this could lead the MHRA and other bodies who appear to have big voices to get fully behind the idea of no visible vapour. And I suppose, yes, uh, prior to the TPD being agreed, then you could possibly have bought clear steam at 54 milligram, say, and cut it with some VG in order to get visible vapour. But obviously with the TPD, you're not going to be able to get it at above 20 milligrams in a couple of years' time. If you cut, I'm not cutting down to 10, I don't care what anybody says. Okay. And I just don't like the idea. I mean, John, how convinced are you that the MHRA would pick up on something like this? What What are you basing it on? Well, it's only really what what you said about Gerard Hastings. I mean, he'd said to I saw him quite recently on TV saying the things he didn't like were the the light on the end of a cigar like. He didn't particularly like cigar likes anyway, and that uh, if the, if the exhaled vapor was invisible or wasn't wasn't so so thick, uh, you know, he, he could see no problem with them. I, I think that's a fairly common view, to be honest. I wouldn't, well, at least it wouldn't surprise me. Well, I mean, I don't think we're giving any secrets away here, but Martin Dockrell of Ash, in conversations we've had, has also said, is there any way we can get rid of the vapour? Remember that, stuff? Yeah, very well. Um, and I mean, this, this was a, a, a conversation that, that, that occurred uh, prior to the ASIG summit, but d didn't you have a conversation with Martin at the summit as well, Sarah? Yeah, I did, but that was more on the um, medicinal regulation. He he seemed to be quite open to the idea at the time, and bear in mind this was before all the rigmarole, you know, with the European Parliament. He was quite open to the idea of uh, a twin track approach, so that there would be med regs for, you know, those companies that voluntarily applied, so that they could sell through. Um, the NHS services, and um, and just consumer regulations for everybody else. Mm. The th the thing with all of this is, as I say, when when Martin was talking to us uh, at a meeting down in London, he was saying, "Is there any way you can do away with the vapor? Because that, as as John has so uh, admirably demonstrated, that would appear to be one of the areas that the antis have." A big problem, as in, I, I don't know why they can't differentiate between vapor and cigarette smoke. If you've got a nose, it's not particularly difficult. And I suppose if they can't differentiate between vapor and cigarette smoke, they're going to have a great deal of difficulty with somebody stood outside on a frosty day, as we've all tweeted and we've all seen pictures of. It's an interesting one. I do, however, have video of the people from Jack Vapor demonstrating their. Um, their juice, which I intend to play in after the adverts, which are imminent and, and indeed are coming up now because it's 20 past already, Sav. Wow, that went quick. It's stuttered by. After the adverts in, we'll play this in. But while the adverts are on, try something. Try closing your eyes and taking a two second inhale and tell me when we come back in chat how that made you feel. Close your eyes, two second inhale. That's all you need to do. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere.
Iveva and Iveva Alexa. Best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iveva.co.uk and iveva-alexa.co.uk. Iveva and iveva-alexa.co.uk. Pro sponsors of vapatrails.tv. And we're back in the room and um, we've, uh, yes, did you try it? Did you try vaping with your eyes shut, people in chat? Have they tried it, Sam? They have, they and? have indeed. Uh, there was a couple of um, technical problems of being unable to locate the buttons. But That's, I bet that was all blokes, was it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we're, 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 uh, we're absolutely famous for not being able to find the button. Yeah, all right, well. <laughs> but... Apart from the, the guys and girls that are doing sub on vaping, most people have said the same thing. I mean, Nelly Scroggett says two seconds is way too short. Took a five second draw, not as satisfying without seeing the vapor. Lorraine has said, really need to see the vapor. Funny, isn't it? Never would have been like that with a cigarette. And there's a lot of people saying the same thing. It's just without seeing it, it's just not satisfying at all. In, in, indeed. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the Vido in and and do do like a monkey see, monkey do. What do you call that game? Simon says. In other words, when you see the guy from Jack Vapor doing it, do it for the same length of time. Try it with whatever you're using and just let us know in chat how it comes about. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go right from the beginning because he spends ages filling cartomizers and what have you. Um, so this is just from where he starts actually using the clear steam. Like I say, play along, you know, and say, see, see, don't need to sing, there's no hand clapping or anything like that. Say what you think. Right, there you go, that was that was the video. Now, here's where I start giving technical trickery and giving the game away. Behind me, up here, is what's called a hair light. Okay? And the idea behind a hair light is it, it, it differentiates where I am versus where every everything else is and it just it delineates my head. If I go to that camera there, you'll be able to see it better. But there is a light straight behind me. And one of the things, one of the effects that that has is when I pick up something like this and give it a drag, it lights up the vapour so it makes it that much more visible. But I hope you saw the timings of those drags. So what I've got here, everybody knows what Keith coiled on Monday and you know how much that chucks out. So I'm going to go the timings. John, can you do me a favour yep. and, and do the one too so I know? Alright. Right, here we go. Are you ready? One elephant, two elephant. See any vapour? Nope. Do it again. Three, two, one. One elephant, two elephant. Oh, there was a little bit there. <laughs> I'll do it again. One elephant, two elephant, three, two, one. 
One elephant, two elephant. I've breathed in and I'm breathing out. Can you say anything? No. Not enough to bother anyone. That's pure VG. He is one of me normal draws. And I'll tell you which one was nicer. <laughs> Sav, what did they say in chat? Right, I had quite a bit to say on that as well. Um, Outlaw Cox has said, If my juice from my favourite vendor didn't have Crave Vapor as well as the taste, I don't think I would buy it. Moonlit has said, So what he's doing there is stealthy. <laughs> Dream Vapor said, You would look like a right city person vaping like that. Did he mean a tit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slim UK he said there's a hole in the back of his head. That's where the vapor's going. TJ says, nope, not impressed. Vapor Caper says, you can see the vapor going up the Evod mouthpiece and none coming out. Interesting. Carter said, well, you don't need a special juice to do that. Dan for Shizzle has said, you can achieve the same on a bad Evod head and hang scent juice, just so you know. <laughs> uh, and very boring has said, so it's a marketing piece of shenanigans, not a new liquid. Isn't that what you said, John? Sorry, I missed that last bit. It was a marketing piece of shenanigans. That, that, that press perhaps is a bit uncharitable, but it kind of seems that way. Yeah. Sarah? Well, they're not actually the first to do it, are they? I seem to remember somebody else has had um, stealth juice on the market for quite a long time. 2009 and 2010. You know who it was, don't you, Sav? Um, in the UK, Misty Liquid had a stealth juice. There was a couple of companies in America that had stealth juices. Um, but yeah, they've been sort of popping up since 2009. And they don't sell awfully well. Generally not, no. No, because generally speaking, people like to see e-liquids. When I was talking to Martin Dockwell, and he said, is there, is, there, is there no way you can get shot of the vapour? I said, there's a reason why it won't go. Allow me to demonstrate, Martin, is what I said. And I did this. Show off. <laughs> if you, you you know I mean part and parcel of these things is getting enjoyment out of them and the bottom line on it is if you don't enjoy using an e-cig what are you going to do and if part of the enjoyment is blowing great plumes forming rings seeing if you can get them into little hearts or just Filling the studio with a great bank of fog, if that's what lights your candle, floats your boat, fills your bucket, then I say go for it. I have no real objection to the juice being on sale, especially if you're going to use it on a plane or something like that, but seriously, don't try and make capital out of it. It's almost as bad as trying to capitalise on bloody no smoking, dear. Sav? What's chat got to say? Yeah, I just saw there's a couple of opinions from the other side of it. Vapor Cape has come in and said, I don't see the issue. Let people innovate, and if it falls on its bottom, because most people don't want it, meh. Yes. And uh, Crossbow's come in and said, it's not something he would personally use, but it's fine to have, have as an option. Yes. Yeah, I can, I, I, like I say, I've got no objection to it being on the market. I just really don't want... Um, those who would oppose us to latch onto this and start thinking that that's the way they can force us to go. We've already been forced to compromise too much and that annoys me more than somewhat. Um, while we're talking about compromise and what we're doing again it, I think it's probably time to have a look and see what's happening. Oh hello, that's decided not to bloody load now. We're having great fun with interwebs tonight. There we go, it's up now, so that's all good. It's EFVI.EU time. And I just thought it would be a good idea to have a look at the numbers and see how we're going. Um, see where we stand on the league tables and stuff like that. So I've scrolled all the way down to the bottom. And currently the numbers stand at 52,271 out of a million. And UK, 11,890 out of 54,750. Um... Sweden, 212, they're at 1.4%. Uh, Spain, 9.1%. Slovenia, 0.5%. Come on, Slovenia, get your finger out. Uh, Slovakia, 3.5%. Romania, 0.4%. And so on and so on and so forth. You can see them all going up there. 
um, <coughs> where everybody's at. Um, I can't remember who's in the lead at the moment. He said lying through his teeth because it's Finland who are at 40% of their target right there in the middle of your screen right at this moment in time. Now, on Twitter, he said, coming back to the big camp, somebody was asking me, what can we do to accelerate this because there'd been a little bit of a slowdown over the last couple of days. We need ideas. John, have you got anything up your sleeve? Can you think of anything to accelerate this off? I've been rather poor at completely missing the point lately. Um, I questioned uh, just the other day why we had the 38 degrees petition. It kind of just baffled me why we had a petition to publicise a petition. But of course the point is the 38 degrees will publicise uh, that on our behalf and uh, they will catch just the sort of people who like signing up for things. So it's, it's clearly a good thing and, and we should do it. Um, as for other ideas, I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Yeah, Sarah, you got anything up your sleeve? Well, what, what I've been doing is um, I went, I had a look on the internet for um, shops local to me that are kind of off our radar, you know, not, not the ones who are involved on Twitter and the ones who have a big online presence and things like that. Um, and I found um, a shop oh, not, not too far from me printed off a load of the uh, flyers and things that uh, Andy Oakley designed um, and the sign-up forms took them down there, had a chat with them, they were all for it, thought it was a brilliant idea um, and they're now signing up their customers. Um, I plan to do that again, I've already got another target in mind, another shop that is kind of on the peripheral of the scene if you like. Um, but what I'm also going to do is try and get postcards into places like, um, you know, wherever they've got these notice boards mm -hmm. in um, not only the big supermarkets but also corner shops and things. And I've ordered up a load of uh, business card sized um, flyer things that have got the QR code on the back. And I'm just going to leave them all over the place. <laughs> and always, always have a. Um, a few with me so that you know if people ask me about vaping I can just you know I can talk to them and I can give them the card so that they've got the um, you know ways to access it um, but generally I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave them all over the place and I'm what I'm hoping is to be such a nuisance that people are gonna say well what is this all about <laughs> that sounds I like the idea of being a nuisance that fits <laughs> in with my persona really well um, <laughs> and I'm doing similar around here going around the neighbors um, dropping sign off sign off sign up sheets at, at all sorts of different places i mean even our corner shop sells e so i'm leaving sign up she sheets there um, and so on and so forth so has uh, chat come up with anything while we've been talking there's a couple of things robert cleaver said i've been actively campaigning for the last two weeks i've been printing flyers and going out in the streets and telling people and next week i'm getting them in all the local shops along with the paper signature sheets very boring, it says, I'm taking flyers to my mental health team meeting next week to get passed around since they were interested in ASIGs e when I started going. Mm -hmm. Silent79 says, BBC style public vape meets with printed out forms for the public. Mm -hmm. Rusty yes. said, get Forest on side. Um, Dam Heaven has said, I have over 550 mail contacts. I sent to them all with AFVI links and why it's important to me and a plea that they should do it. So everyone gets one, even old contacts and old work buddies. And my favourite suggestions come from Slim UKV. Prisons. It's a captive audience. <laughs> <laughs> John, you stuck your thumb up when somebody said BBC style vape meat. Yeah, I mean, it does seem to me that, you know, especially as we've got some nice weather coming, we ought to be getting out on the streets a little bit more. Who was it? I, I'm, and I'm sorry, I, my memory gets like a sieve because I see so much communication one way or another. Wasn't it? Was it Sprotty? that had been out and got 97 signatures outside one of the uh, the shopping malls or somewhere. Oh, it possibly, it could have been, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the last week, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's happened in the last week. The people have just gone out with clipboards and stood and said, will you sign up? Yeah. Um, and Fuzzy Ants just said, have we got car stickers like we did with the E6 Save Lives? I'm not aware of any yet, but I'm sure that can be organised. I, I, to be honest, I really, really do think that this is going to be vital for us 
to uh, to get some kind of movement going before implementation absolutely has to be undertaken in every member state. And I will say that those thresholds that we have to meet aren't the end of it, because if you if every country meets its threshold, it's still only halfway there. It's not the full million, um, and I still honestly feel that we need to achieve the million before Vapefest, which is early August. Um, because the quicker we do it, the more notice they are likely to take. Um, I think we've all got to do everything that we can. I, I was, when, when first was brought up earlier on this week, my initial thought was we've probably saturated the forums um, and kind of all of the active mm. vapors have signed up now and we need to be looking wider. Your thoughts, John? Yeah, I think that's true. Um, I like the idea of the uh, doing the shopping centres and that sort of thing. You know, even if it's only just a couple of you with a, with some leaflets and uh, and some paper printed forms, uh, it'd be quite easy to get you know forty, fifty. I would think in an hour or two. Well, I mean, the the other the other weekend when Jill and I went uh, through into Sunderland and we'll be going again this weekend. As we came out of the bridges, the shopping mall there, the local fire brigade, who are under threat from councils were there collecting signatures and everybody stopped and they did it the right way it was just to excuse me i'm from the fire brigade and we're under threat would you mind signing a petition and it was as easy as that and i think that's probably a good idea if we set up teams of vapors um, to just go and ask politely people coming out of shopping malls or into bus stations or whatever it happens to be would you mind signing this up so that we've got a bit more voice about our rights to use e-cigs, vaporisers, PVs, call them what the hell you like. And I, I think, I honestly think 50% of the people that you ask will sign up. I really do. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, let's go to Sarah. Sarah? Yeah, I, I think it's a brilliant idea, to be honest. I, I did catch that on um, on Twitter, but I, I can't remember who it was. But um, I think I think it's a fabulous idea, really. Um, I think it's probably easier for firemen because everybody loves firemen, don't they? <laughs> I think you're, you're speaking you're speaking from a woman's viewpoint there, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. John and I like them, but we're not that fond, are we, John? <laughs> I'm sure they're all nice boys. Yes. Maybe we should get the firemen to go out there and do it for us. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Hey, that's getting that. signatures. That's getting signatures, Sav. <laughs> I know firemen do it for you anyway, don't they? Say nothing. <laughs> Look at her eyes. And the big eyes, now you can see them. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be... I mean, there's, there's all kinds happening, and, and it, this is all the hearts and minds thing. And yes, I think that's what we're going to be needing to do. We need to be getting out there. Um, and get as many signatures as we can. And as I said, when first we introduced efvi.eu in, in Vapor Trail shows, I'm going to bang on about it, and I'm going to keep on banging on about it and doing everything I can until we get to that million signatures. Because I really, really do want to see EFVI getting into Brussels with the support, not just of a million vapors throughout Europe, but every vapor and not just vapors but every family throughout europe i think it's so important and it it states our case unequivocally that there should be nothing about us without us that's exactly the way i feel and i think i'm probably speaking for everybody here aren't i when i say that mm, definitely oh yes yeah. yes so there you are there you are that's that's where it needs to be. You've got something, Sav, I can tell, because I heard that I, intake of breath. I have, yes. Um, there was a good idea about Morningstar's just said, get the firefighters to do it to help stop people falling asleep with a lit cigarette. I'm all up for that. Uh, but Blaze has said, Spanish, <laughs> Spanish papers are having an action day on the 26th of April for the collection of signatures. Good. Dream Vapor said, that's just it. Wait for the nice weather. Get the girls in short skirts with the clipboards out in the shopping centres and the firefighters. I may have added that bit on the end. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Just what, Does that mean that the boys can't wear short skirts? They probably can, but they may be getting a whole different kind of signatures. Well, OK. Yep, Back to you. All good. <laughs> uh, Max Height has said, again in capital letters, vendors are not doing enough. Robert Cleaver said, I got 37 signatures last week and told to go away once. 
and Discord Des says, why don't we get a centralized list of shops so we can tick them off as they take use the forms? The centralized, I mean, the centralized list of shops is going to be all but impossible to do, but it's worthwhile trying. That's for absolute certain. Um, it's easier to do, I think, on a, on a, a regional area basis, as in, I don't know, pick a county or a, a parish or other names of small areas are also available. Um, and, and we've got we've got a massive tool. We've got an absolutely massive tool in Twitter. We can use Twitter to communicate like that. It works so well. And if we coordinate all of this kind of thing via Twitter, you can say, right, in the city of, I don't know, Leeds or York or Birmingham or Manchester or Sheffield or wherever it happens to be, there are X number of bricks and mortar shops. I have been into this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and all bar the last one have taken forms and they've got them. Can somebody else go and bounce up and down on them because they told us I was a tosser or something along those lines? And maybe even go around in twos and threes and just and, and make the case. I think we've got to do this. We've got to be out there. We've got to make ourselves known. Go and stand outside vape shops. Stand outside B&M's. Bricks and mortars, that's what B&M stands for, by the way, not the shop called B&M. Although you could stand there as well, that wouldn't be a bad place either. And get signatures. I mean, it's not difficult to do, and you only need 100 forms or so. Why not? Why not? It's got to be worth giving a try. Has to be worth giving a try. Of that, I'm absolutely certain. We need to be doing stuff like that. On the upside, moving away from EFVI, unless there's anything else from chat, is this off? No, no, nothing else from chat. I wanted to move and talk about this because there's all kinds of stuff happening, if you like, at, 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 a, at a, a higher level, if you like. But in Warsaw, and again, I'm not going to say anything stupid like I said last night, but in June, uh, the 27th and 28th of June in Warsaw will be the Global Forum on Nicotine. And I just wanted to bring to your attention the stamp of the people that will be speaking. We have Professor Ricardo Pelosa, Dr. Konstantinos Farsalinos, Andre Sobjak from the Institute of Occupational Medicine and Environmental Health in Sosnoyek in Poland, uh, Dr. Gonowitz from Roswell Park Cancer, Inti Cancer Institute at Buffalo in the US of A, Lynn Dawkins, Jerry Stimson, Peter Hayek, Carl Lund, Hazel Mabe, Robert, M oh Lord, I can never get this right, Jorzinski from Poland, Miroslav Dvorniksak, again from Poland, Delon Human, Leon Kosmider, Lou Ritter, everybody knows Lou Ritter, if you're watching in the States you must know Lou Ritter, uh, Jacques Louezek in France, Carl Fagerstrom, Clive Bates, Charlie Hamsaw, Thomas and Rebecca Taylor. This is all happening in Poland on the 27th to the 28th of June in Warsaw. Those are 19 speakers that are confirmed thus far. I am also going to be there. I think Sav's going with us and I think my wife's going with us as well. We're going mob-handed. And with a little bit of luck and a following wind, we'll be bringing you a live broadcast on the Friday night from Poland and interviewing some of these people. Tickets will be available. I don't know how much they are yet, but if you go to gfn.net.co you can uh, find out more about it this is being organized by jerry stimson and it promises to be fabulous because it's going to set the agenda for an awful lot of nicotine conversations worldwide you do you know anything about it john um i i have had discussions about it um uh, it's a bit, little bit difficult because I can't say too much about it at this stage, but uh, I suspect there will be a few vapours going with you. That's what we like to hear. Do you know much about it, Sarah? No, but I'm definitely going to be going. I've already got it in my diary. <laughs> there you go. I think it's, it's, gonna, it's going to help set the agenda. Um, certainly with respect to a meeting that's happening in October... COP7, is it no, COP6 or COP7? Either way, the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control is discussed in October and I'm hoping that this uh, Global Nicotine Conference in Warsaw will have some 
influence on what happens there. There are other meetings happening about that as well. And it's time for the second set of adverts. The time is absolutely battened by tonight. Um, we'll take the adverts and when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about BAT's entry into the Generation 2 market because I think that also is going to have all kinds of ramifications and I want to hear the panel's view and your view on that. So if you've got a view, start clattering it in now. And while we're in the adverts, have another go at a two second drag with your eyes closed to see what you think. Back in a couple of minutes, don't go anywhere. And we're back in the room. We're back in the room. I'm going to put this... Well, did you did you all try it? Did you try vaping with your eyes shut? What have they said, Sav? Slim's gone blind because he poked himself in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been on the drink, has he? <laughs> it's that old thing they do in the States. Can you touch your nose with your index finger with your eyes closed? Yes, of course I can. Hang on. It's here somewhere. Do you do... Was it, oh, my nose, sorry. Yes, right eye, fine. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, I... I was that it? Yes. People are not bothered about trying it, are they? I think they've written it off as a bad idea. Yeah, tried it once, didn't like it. I've got one <laughs> child. <laughs> I've got one grandchild. <laughs> tried it once. <laughs> I've only been married once as well, but that's not the same reason. I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> Because my sister-in-law will be watching and she'll be straight on the phone to my wife uh, if I get that wrong. Um, yes, BAT, in, in the guise of IntelliSig, with BAT's rolling this out all over the place, the XL Pro Pack. And there it is. The price is £39.99. And while we were talking about it over the adverts, we all went, ooh, bit pricey, and then thought, oh, hang on, just a minute. It's... Um, it incorporates a powerful battery, it says here, which can deliver extended usage between charges coupled with a dual coil glassomizer, providing increased performance and enough eco-pure e-liquid capacity to last the average user two days. I would argue against that, frankly, my dear. It's 2.4 millilitres, it says here. And there's your specs on it. You get one XL Pro VV battery, in other words, an Ego Twist or a Vision Spinner, one of those types of things, an XL Pro glassomizer, a USB charger, and 10 mils of 30 milligram Eco Pure E liquid. And there you go, that's what it is. As I said, it's 2.4, says there, the dual coil is encased within a 2.4 milliliter capacity glass tank, which means it's safe from Sav's juice. You can, it's nothing safe from my juice. It's glass. Yeah, just drop it. Oh, well, I forgot about it. But, ah, but, but, it's shielded by a metal outer case to protect your glass of eyes when you drop it. Well, there you go. There you are, that's what it says there in blue. Look at that. 
So, oh, yeah, it's still managed to break it. Even, even marketing doesn't lie. What do you make of that, John? Are you pleased at the idea that BAT in the guise of IntelliSeq's putting this out and it's going to go around all of the... I would imagine Lloyd's Pharmacy will take it on and I would imagine Boots will be banging up and down to get it as well. I love it. Um, it's, not the f it's not the only big tobacco Gen 2 device. Uh, I've saw, I saw Matt Gluggles was showing a sort of CE4 and fairly bog standard 650 ego battery pack um, from one of the big players not long ago um, but you know the more of these the better this is what we will really want to see and what it does it means we've got a company selling it who potentially could apply for uh, a medicines license yes whether or not they get it is you know debatable but they they've got the the, the finances to, to go through that process and that would mean we could get juice over 30 milligrams yes and that's what we really need we need a big player who's going to get approval for a re refillable medical e-cig i think you're right sarah what's your take on that yeah i'm i'm with john i'm i'm actually really quite excited about this and um the first I, the first i saw it was again when uh, matt reviewed it on his um on his blog um at the time, he didn't know the price. We've had a little chat about the price, and yeah, it seemed toppy at first until you add up the components because it's a, it's a spinner battery and, uh, an Aspire glassomizer. So by the time you add in the cost of some 30 milligram juice, it's priced about right. And and what I liked about it as well, from what Matt said, was it's got really clear instructions with it, and this is um, Gen 2 going mainstream. You know, they they're going to be out there. Uh, I think that can only be good for us. Oh, it's absolutely right. I mean, the fact that there's going to be Gen 2, and as I say, um, it's just unfortunate that one of the, what used to be the council around here for housing is called Gen 2, but never mind. Um, the fact that Generation 2 stuff's going to be, as I say, I would think it's going to be in Lloyd's Pharmacy, it's going to be in all the corner shops, it's going to be everywhere. This is proper kit. Mm. And it's good news. What's Chad got to say, Sav? Mona has said, hmm, a VVE going a glass clear up. That's an unusually wise choice of kit. Tis a bit spendy though at 40 quid. Entropy said it's an Aspire head, so it's actually very good according to Matt. Moonlit has said again, should come with a couple of batteries and a couple of clearos in his opinion, but the basic setup looks solid to me, unexpectedly so. Dripper Box says, yeah, TPD will ban this. Good news for us as BET will want to protect it. Rob has said, it's brilliant as far as I am concerned, but a bit expensive for a single battery. Entropy said, it's exactly the equipment I recommend to people who ask for a good starter kit. But Doodlebug has said, no, we really do not need that. That's interesting. Pourquoi? Pourquoi? And I know we're going to have to wait a little while for it to tap it in, but why do we not need that? Because I, I, my, I'm, with, I'm with John on this one. I think the, uh, the possibility exists that the 30 and 45 milligram Eco Pure might well be something that they would seek to get an MA on so that the higher rate of juice is there. Uh, this is assuming that everything else goes pear-shaped. Um, but I, I quite like the idea that we're going to be able to get higher milligram juice. Um, and and, and I actually... Honestly, my feeling is that if enough people pick up on this, folks that are not already part of the community, and in terms of numbers of vapors that are part of the, the, the forum community, the VTTV community, and the Twitter community, those numbers are vanishingly small in comparison to the better than one and a half million eSig users that are supposedly out there. If this is going to get Generation 2 devices out there and into their hands and get them using them everywhere, that sounds like a damn good idea to me. Have we had anything back on that one, Saf? Um, I've had a couple of things. Crossbow says, I hope it doesn't come down to being the good thing that BET have a med -E sig Lorian has said, I could not see that as a med device. It wouldn't be able to get through the hoops. And Doodlebug has said, there's no way they'll be able to get an ME on that. And I think it's highly unlikely that they would throw money at it trying. I'm not looking, I'm not thinking about an ME for the device. I'm thinking of the device actually getting people onto Gen 2 that are not part of the community and who don't buy over the interwebs. I'm thinking more in terms of the juice. Was that where you were going, John? Well, yeah, but of course then we need a device that's got an MA that can use the juice. 
according to the last spec I saw from the MHRA, it was you could get a license for a juice, but it had to be produced and tested on a on a given already licensed device. Yeah, I'm I'm I've got to be honest and say I'm not sure whether the the wording of the TPD changes that. Mm. Um, I don't know whether that's likely still to be the case, and this is where the battle for implementation is going to be a battle and we're going to have to be involved in that to a hell of a large degree. Uh, Doodlebug has added some more. Go on. Um, she said they won't waste uh, money on Gen 2, they will keep pushing their lucky likes. They would have to get an Emmy for the juice based on the device used that you use it in. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. It might well be the case. And I, like I say, we're going to need to see what the final wording of TPD Mark II is when it comes out. In, in, in fairness, the whole of Article 20 and see what the final wording on it is after Council's had its 10 penneth tomorrow. But all of this makes it all the more important that the EFVI succeeds. Um, it makes it that much more vital. Um, uh, Kath has just added a final bit. She says, and it's worse than that because you have to test the juice on every possible device it could be used in. And that's a large part of the reason why meds regs is for lots of asterisks. Oh, don't get me wrong. And I, I, I'm, I, I don't know whether I'm speaking for John here. I abhor the idea of med regs. I'm saying if everything goes pear-shaped and that is the last resort, then at least we do know that the likes of BAT have got the money to throw at getting something through if it's possible to do. Is that, is that where you're sitting, John? Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, you know, I'd rather we didn't have to deal with this at all, but, uh, but we are having to deal with it, and we need a refillable device to get an MA. Yes, indeed. Because that opens the doors for all of us, for all devices. And, yeah, you may have to... Technically, you have to check, check them on any, any device that it could be used in, but that can't include unlicensed devices, can it? I would have thought once the liquid... What are, you gonna, what are they going to do when you go down to Boots and ask for your... 10 mil bottle of 45 milligram eco pure are they going to demand to see your bat ma approved device or are they just going to take it as red you've got one this is why when you go for baby food or uh, vaseline for use on babies bottoms with nappies or other greasy things are available <laughs> to... i'm sorry i uh, did you, we, we had one to change during the course of the day and seriously i don't know what my daughter's feeding that bear and i really don't <laughs> But you know what I'm saying, you don't have to show that you've got a baby when you go for nappies. Um, you don't have to, uh, you know, if you go to get those bloody horrible nasty refills for your Nicotrol inhaler, you don't have to show that you've got the inhaler. So you, you're you not going to have to prove what you've got, you just go and buy your juice. But as John says, last resort, if everything else goes pear-shaped, at least there's that little light at the end of the tunnel and at least we know they've got the money to be able to get it through. Um, but yes, I, I welcome uh, the XL Pro, I do, um, on the basis that it's going to open out Generation 2 vaping to those people who might otherwise never hear about it, who have never been on a forum, who have never been anywhere other than Lloyd's or the corner shop to pick up their lucky lady. It's going to be a Generation 2 device, which I hear will have enough um, profitability to make it attractive to vendors who are not I'm going to call them traditional e-cig vendors. You know what I mean. They're not specific uh, B&M e-cig vendors, but your corner shops, your pharmacies, your general dealers, Asda, Tesco, and places like that. And I've upset. No, I haven't upset. I should come back. So I thought, uh, thought you'd disappear. I thought, I thought you were going to do a crack of dawn there for us. Hang on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, Yes, guess who forgot to charge a battery? Oh, you didn't. <laughs> I just plugged it in. <laughs> oh, if you've gone past through on it now, what are you using? I've just plugged the iPad in on the uh, uh, to the mains. Oh, right, it was the iPad battery that was dropping, <laughs> not your e-cig. No. <laughs> Silly me, of course, it wouldn't be the e-cig, would it? No, no. Sav, what more have we got? All right, before we run out of time, I'll just rattle through these. Um, Robert said, as I see it, it'll get more people onto Gen 2 devices if it's available in pharmacies, and the more the better. Rusty said, Big Tobacco wants as many restrictions as they can. They have the money to get the boxes ticked, the small e-cig companies haven't. 
Neil Roth has said, they have not invested much in this. It's already available equipment. A quick buck is what it is. Joseph K said, BAT or anyone with market captivity with a good quality Gen 2 device, irrespective of the MA, has to be a good thing. Lorraine has said, it is based on watching the popular part of the market and seeing what is going to work and appeal. BAT are not stupid. And Mona has said, you know what I could see happening? Print a cartridge style chipped clearos or cartomizers which measure the remaining liquid and won't let you refill them. Oh my god. See, there's somebody that's got a grip on technology. Yep. Chipped. Oh, bloody hell. Scary thought, isn't it? It's not a good one, is it? Hmm. That's probably a good point to bring the show to a close. There's been, there's been a lot of cause for thought tonight, I think, and we didn't even mention a chain of pubs, 6,000 strong, that is making e-cigs available for sale rather than tobacco cigs. We didn't even mention that. I, I've got to be honest and say at the moment, I do think that the battle for hearts and minds is slowly but surely being won. There's all kinds of stuff being happening that we haven't even touched on tonight and stuff that's going to be happening that we haven't touched on tonight. I am encouraged by that. Not massively so, but I am encouraged that the hearts and minds battle is being won. But it's only going to be won if we get out there and win it. And I think I've got to say this. We're all in this together. Let's get out there. Let's get signatures for EFVI. Let's get out there with our Generation 2 and Generation 3 devices blowing bloody great clouds so that people can see we're not monsters with two heads and three arseholes. We are... I do apologise for that. I should... <laughs> <laughs> not even sure where that came from, but let's get... <laughs> I've been called <laughs> <laughs> let's get out there and show that we're just normal people doing normal things with kit that will be normal in two or three years and let people see they've got nothing to be scared of um, as per usual I've got some thank yous to say and then chat will have the last word I want to say a big thank you to both John and Sarah for coming along and joining us tonight in this slightly revamped studio thank you so much for your input it's it's help my mind get into a, a proper a proper mindset um the pair of you it's it's lovely to have you along again as usual yeah, my pleasure always a pleasure never a chore how are you getting on with the cotton john loving it yeah perfect good stuff have you gone cotton yet sarah cotton wool cotton yeah i've been on cotton wool for months but i haven't tried the um string stuff that you use yet. Come, come up to the knees mate I would love to. I would love to. When is it? 5th of April. Yep. Right, I think I'm in Birmingham that weekend. Oh, do but you? if I'm not... <laughs> yeah. Sav? What? You just said something. I said, yeah. Yeah, 5th of April. Well, yep. and that, that, that invite goes out to everybody. Come up for the knees, mate. 5th of April. Loads of hotel rooms around the place. It'll be a blast. It'll be brilliant. Um, so thank you to John and to Sarah. And thank you also to Sav and everybody for watching. But chat always gets the last word. What sage words have you got this week, Sav? Tonight's last word came from Lipsy and it was a comment that was put in very early on in the show. And Lipsy said, They drove smokers outside and they want to do with the same to vapours. Knickers to them. Exactly. <laughs> and on that note... Thank you so much for joining us, everybody that has been live. And if you're watching video on demand, thank you for watching us too. Don't forget, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down while you're getting people to sign up for the EFVI. Until we see you next time, from all of us here at Vapor Trails TV and everywhere else, take care of each other. We'll see you next time. Be good. Bye-bye. <laughs>